Hey everybody, it's Reagan Archbald, your host of the Knee and Spinal Pain Relief Summit. And today you're in for a very special treat because I've got one of the leaders in pain therapies and somebody who thinks outside of the box, somebody who's been a great collaborative partner, and he's also my own personal chiropractor. This is Dr. Dylan Knight. Dylan, welcome to the summit. Yeah, thanks for having me. Great intro. I appreciate it. Yeah, and I've just shared a little bit about, I mean, you grew up in Draper, Utah. You're an athlete. You played football, you wrestled, you played baseball. Yeah. And and then tell us how you got into, um, you know, how, how you became a chiropractor and how you even got into that medicine. I mean, you went to an orthopedist, but maybe you could take us through that process. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, like you mentioned, I grew up a uh, three-sport athlete. Um, played throughout my, you know, since I was a little league and through high school, uh, my freshman year of high school, I had a football injury and, you know, I it hurt at the time, but it wasn't a huge deal until, you know, weeks into months later, I started having a lot more, uh, back pain. I started having some headaches and migraines, which I never had before. And then I started having some weakness into my extremities. Like I was just benching one day and we were in the team weight room and all of a sudden I was just warming up and all of a sudden I just couldn't even put push my arms up it just felt like I had no strength like at all and so that started kind of a red flag to me went to several doctors eventually got referred to an orthopedist specialist and he wanted to fuse my spine from about uh, t1 to l2 um wow. and so but he told me I could never play contact sports again and so that wasn't very uh wasn't very appealing and so that's when uh you know, my mom reached out and she was just like, you know, I have this, uh, I have this friend I grew up with. He's a chiropractor up in Bountiful. His name is Dr. Kirk Worsland. And he's like, let's just reach out to him and see what, you know, maybe their side of things can do. And then he referred me down into uh, Dr. Scott Frogman because it was close to where I lived. And through my results with them, um, within the first couple of weeks, I, you know, didn't have any pain. Within the next couple of months, my like strength came back and I actually even felt stronger and I was able to avoid surgery, which allowed me to continue to play contact sports. And even into my uh, doctor program, I actually played division one uh, men's rugby. And so, uh, you know, it's a pretty heavy contact sport and through what the chiropractic and what they taught and gave me, you know, after the results I had with that, it was a no brainer for me to go to school and uh, want to become a chiropractor. So, yeah. And a great chiropractor you become. And Scott Brogley is also uh, one of our doctors and physicians on the summit. So yeah. uh, you guys get to hear from him as well. And and so you graduated, um, you know, not too long ago. You were at the Palmer College of Chiropractic in Davenport, Iowa. Yeah. But not, not only that, um, you were, you played Division One. You were the president of the Palmer's Palmer Mentors. Um, so you, you taught other other students, which I think is, uh, you know, you, I, we got the best of the best here. And then you finished your CCEP and FMT certification. So, so tell us about those certifications. Yeah. So the CCEP certification is the only um, extremity certification that actually has a uh, licensing or board. You know, you can take a lot of different courses. But uh, Dr. Kevin Huron, who's out of uh, Boise, Idaho, actually started the CCEP protocols and stuff like that. And so it's a seven weekend intensive um, extremity uh, coursework that really helps to you know, expand your view of the knowledge about how the body works as a multiple whole. Well, they really just focus a lot more on like kind of the spine and, you know, maybe even just barely some soft tissue stuff outside of the spine. But you know, the CCEP kind of brings in that other half of it to bring in extremity work and how, you know, a neck problem can also be a shoulder problem or vice versa. And so that was a big key into kind of what I, you know, wanted to look into, but as well, the FMT is just functional movement training. And so, you know, the body has certain movements that are supposed to have, you know, more of a functional pattern. And so if it starts to lose those and retraining the body that can uh, help with anything that we're kind of dealing with here. I also just finished my uh, MUA uh, C certification. So my MUA manipulation under anesthesia certification. So uh, I've also been working into doing those as well too. Man, so uh, an enormous background. And 
And so one of the things that um, we're going to talk about, we're going to, we've got a lot to cover, but um, we will talk about the MUAs because a lot of people are like, I've never heard of that manipulation under anesthesia. And the first time I saw it happen <laughs> at the surgical center in South Jordan, I said, that is amazing. And people get up, they feel great. So, so we'll dive into that. But before we do, uh, who, who would you say your most influential mentor has been? Uh, I have a lot of mentors, so I'll, that's a hard question, but I'd probably say who's also on the Summit Series is Dr. Scott Frogley. So he's always been my uh, mentor in a way throughout the years. Um, you know, he was originally my Cairo back in the day when I had my injury. And then after I finished high school, my four years of undergraduate work, I worked right under him. So uh, for four years, I worked in, as a structural rehab manager um, down at Integrated in South Jordan. And so... I've learned a lot from him over the years that really propelled me through school um, and gave me a more broad perspective going into it. Yeah, he's somebody who, uh, uh, I mean, not only did he, he literally grew up at, at Palmer University. I mean, his dad was on the teaching <laughs> staff there and created the curriculum. I mean, uh, but, but Dr. Brogley, but then he's thought outside of the box and he's been able to integrate so many things. And so yeah, exactly. what, what a what a gift to have him as a mentor. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and so um, if you looked at, you know, some of the mistakes people make right now, I mean, I know you love structural alignment, movement. What are some of the things people are doing that are affecting their, their ability to move properly? Uh, it comes a lot down to micro and macro traumas. You know, a lot of people can understand the macro trauma. You know, you get in a car accident, or, you know, a sports injury, you know, you slip on ice, you slip down the stairs, something that was a big trauma where they can relate back to like, oh, since then, like I've changed the way I've moved to kind of do that. But a lot of people kind of think or forget about micro traumas. You know, if you're doing something, you know, a hundred times over, but you're doing it incorrectly, your body builds patterns. And so there's a term called neuroplasticity where it's kind of that muscle memory where you're building that neural pathway of how the body moves, you know, and, you know, it could be a good or a bad thing. And so if I'm sitting at a desk all day with my shoulders and out round like this it might not seem like a big deal right now, but if I do that every day for the next year, well, my body is building those patterns around how I work and move. And then we have to retrain those patterns because these start to slowly, you know, decay into the body. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, you can see that, you know, people slouching over, the tech neck. I mean, yeah. That's, it, it, Natural that's diagnosis a, now. Like they had to put it into the ICD-10 codes because it's happening so often. Because, yeah, I mean, I, I walk down the street and I'm like, man, there's about 50% of the population with their head buried in the phone and they're walking on busy intersections and streets. And it's pretty scary. I mean, maybe they're looking for Google directions, but a lot of people, you can tell, they're just checking their Facebook feed as they're walking. Right. So what's, what's that doing to your gait when you're walking with your head forward? It changes their center of gravity. So your number one right of balance is your riding reflex. So it's keeping your eyes level to the horizon. And so let's say they even stop looking at their phone, but they've built this pattern of where their head just starts to come forward. If my head came forward, technically it should come forward like this. But, you know, no one's going to do that. So they crank the muscles in their neck to help keep their head and eyes level. And all of a sudden my body has to change its position. So I might start to tuck my pelvis underneath and all of a sudden I'm not getting my full gait of pattern in through there and I'm firing my psoas or those hip flexors different. And so all of a sudden I'm starting to lose those curves. And instead of sitting back on the joints of the spine, like they're supposed to in the facets, they're actually sitting up on the discs. And all of a sudden people are like, yeah, I have bulging, you know, herniated or degenerative disc disease. You know, it's just something that happens while we age. I'm like, it's something that happens while you've incorrectly used your body for a long period of time. And then the years of continuing to do that is the age part. You know, there's areas that are doing just fine. There's areas of stress. They're both the same age. So why is one wear it out compared to the other? And so that's what we kind of want to look at. Because it's kind of like the bow and arrow analogy, right? Like we want the spine to be like a bow where it's got some flex to it, movement. Right. And we want to have that nice S curve if you're looking at it from the side. But what most people are doing, what you're saying is because they're tilting their head forward, not like this, but like this, you know, they're tilting their, they're, they're bringing their head forward, but tilting their head upwards so they can see the horizon. 
then what's happening is their their spine is like an arrow and then how much more compression does, does that add on the spine is that what causes some of those these degenerative disc conditions that a lot of patients see us for absolutely so the the discs are meant for shock absorption so they're kind of our shocks in our system but if we're constantly loading our shocks um, you start to wear them out a lot more frequent for every inch forward the head goes it actually doubles in weight you know, when, if, for example, if you see something, someone carrying something heavy, they never carry it out here because they wear out really quickly. They carry it in tight to their body. That's what's happening with their head. The head's coming forward and it's making their body have to stress a lot more to help hold them upright. And they start to squish up onto those discs and all the fluid starts to push out and they start to degenerate those joints a lot faster. Joints aren't designed to wear out. Misused and misaligned joints wear out. Wow. I think that's a powerful. So. Uh, so everybody, let's have you say that one more time, Dylan, because a lot of people just say my joints are worn out. I'm like, a, my, I'm 50, but my joints are like a hundred year old man is what my doctor <laughs> tells me. So, so say, say that again. Yeah. So we know that when the joints are moving, like they're supposed to, they're not designed to wear out. Mm -hmm. You know, the body is a, an amazing system of, you know, how it's supposed to move, but you know, just like the alignment in the car, if my front right tire is poking up like this, these three other tires are going to do great, but my right tire is going to keep wearing out, you know, and everyone's like, why is that tire always the one wearing out? Well, it's the one you're stressing the most. And so anytime you're misusing or have a misalignment of a joint, your body will wear and tear that joint way faster than it's supposed to because joints aren't designed to wear out. And what are some of the signs, you know, what, what could people look for right now? to give themselves an assessment to see if they really maybe ought to consider coming to see you? So a couple of assessments is you know, a really easy and quick one is range of motion. You yeah. know, if you take your joints, even if you just, you know, Google like range of motion and what areas of your body are supposed to have it, there's a minimum requirement for certain joints. If it's not moving the full amount of it that it's supposed to. So, you know, for example, lateral neck flexion, I'm supposed to at least get 45 degrees in my neck here, you know, both sides. If I'm trying to rotate my neck, I should have 80 degrees with only moving my neck and not moving my shoulders. And you can even do that in the shoulder. You know, if my arms up here, and I should be able to bring it down to 90 or flat up against the wall, but I can only bring it here. My joint's not working like it's supposed to. Same thing coming back. There's a certain amount of, amount of range of motion that your body should minimally have. And I see it all the time in people where they just can't even move. And they're just like, yeah, you know, it's just tight. You know, maybe I just need a massage. I'm like, no, your body is wearing out that joint. Your body has a misalignment or a um, multi-system failure, meaning that their muscles are firing differently to try to support that um, kind of decrepit joint. And, and so just by not having proper range of motion, like you're saying, you know, with the shoulder test, for example, or the neck test, does that automatically put the body in a greater state of like inflammation or degeneration or, or maybe is it not really that big of a threat unless there's some type of pain that's associated with it? No, it's actually a pretty big threat because pain and dysfunction are two different things. You know, your body uh, perceives pain and dysfunction differently. So pain is a result of inflammation. If I took inflammation out of everybody, you wouldn't have pain, but it doesn't mean you're not dysfunctional. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's why ibuprofen or, you know, acetaminophen and, you know, painkillers, people love them because they're like, oh yeah, you know, I don't have pain, so I'm fine. I'm like, well, I promise you, you're not ibuprofen deficient. It's your body's trying to, you know, make up for the areas of why it's not working like it's supposed to. Usually you'll have a long time of, or amount of dysfunction before you have pain. Wow. Um, the body is such an adaptive tool that you don't necessarily get red flags right out of the gate. And then all of a sudden you go down to pick up a sock off the ground and you get up and you're like, oh, my back just went out. I promise you it wasn't the sock that made your back go out. It was, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back type of thing. Your body is just so chronically stressed that eventually that's what they related in their brain of what happened and why it happened. But it's something that's been going on for months to years. So, uh, so how much dysfunction needs to show up before pain will actually manifest, you know, because pain's kind of the tip of the iceberg is what you're saying. Yeah. And that's different for everybody, you know, because 
if we checked, you know, someone's, you know, for example, like C reactive protein and they have more inflammation, they probably have more aches in general versus someone that has less C reactive protein or just inflammatory markers in general, they might be able to have certain dysfunction in joints for a longer period of time. So that's kind of hard to measure and it's kind of subjective, right? Because I can't measure pain. You know, if someone says my neck pain's an eight for someone else, that might be a four, you know, on a scale of one to 10. Um, and so that's when, and pain can refer to, that's the other hard part and people kind of forget is that most of the time, the area that has pain is the area that's been compensating for the er other areas that aren't working very well. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that is true. I mean, the referred source of pain is so prevalent. And so, uh, I think that's important. And that's where, you know, with working with Dr. Dillon, um, he gets, spinal x-rays and joint x-rays and MRIs and he's great at reading those and, and so if you look at our our overall process at anodyne pain and wellness we take our patients through three phases of care right we're removing the inflammation we're repairing the damage and then we're regenerating and remodeling the body and so we're always moving people on this this healing trajectory and and so if we look at the phase one the removal of inflammation maybe this would be a good time to talk about some of the things we do that are novel that people may not have been introduced to um, that, that you're doing with your, your MUAs. And then uh, maybe some of the other things we do in phase one to get people radically changed up front so we can actually do the rehab on the backside. Yeah, absolutely. So over the years, um, working in structural rehab and you know now being uh, a chiropractor up here in Anodyne, we do sometimes people wait until they have those red flag symptoms. Like for example, maybe they have a really hot disc is, you know, the term that we use a lot of the time where I, we can't do as much rehab or, you know, even chiropractic manipulation or anything like that because they're in such acute pain that everything is spasming and guarding around it. And so we've kind of joined up with what's called an ASC and it's a surgical center that we're allowed to start doing some, um, depending on what's going on, there's lots of different procedures, but we may start doing some low dose corticosteroids. And with those steroids, we have to calm the inflammation down into that area to help open up our rehab window. You know, before, you know, maybe six, seven years ago, I was very against, you know, doing those procedures for a lot of time. It, automatically gets the pain and inflammation away but then people thought they you know were completely better but all we did was just numb the area to the thought of pain and inflammation so the body and the brain are not perceiving that pain but over the course of time we've realized you know people have a tendency to be a little bit pain driven and so we want to actually work in conjunction with that to open up our rehab window so that might be our first phase of care where we're getting rid of inflammation so if i can you know refer them there. We're doing that, or we can also do the MUA procedures. So if they have like a frozen shoulder and with a frozen shoulder, trying to work that out in the office, people are like, Oh, that hurts too much to go through those ranges of motion. I have, you know, haven't been able to move my shoulder like that in years. We use a, a, an anest a local anesthetic and a propofol to help kind of numb or to knock the patient out. And when you're actually knocked out, you don't have the natural tendency to fight some of those restricted motions. And so I'm able to actually pretty much almost get like six visits in with when one MUA procedure, because I'm able to break up so much scar tissue and patients aren't usually quite as sore, which is a lot of the things that surprise people because they think, you know, oh man, you're breaking up all the scar tissue. Most of the time when people are sore, it's because they're fighting those motions. But when they're knocked out, uh, we're able to work through those relatively quickly. You know, the most procedures only last about 10 to 15 minutes at most. And the most that they usually feel is like a really hard workout, but their uh, range of emotion I've seen so far with most patients improved by at least 50% in one visit. And we're usually doing about one to three visits and all of a sudden we can get that range of motion back, open up our rehab window to make sure that this isn't happening. So using, you know, whether those procedures are the MUA or the low dose corticosteroids and then opening up our rehab helps us into our second phase, which is that remodel where we're retraining the body to help make this not happen and make this a more permanent change. And then we go into the regenerative phase where we help to regenerate some of those tissues that may have, you know, taken that brunt force. But now that everything's in a healing and correct position, you know, the body will really excel and not just be kind of a band-aid effect. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's really phenomenal. And, and so, uh, you know, you, when you're talking about this, you've been working on my shoulders, my back, my whole body. And, uh, I told you the other day, I said, man, it'd be great. Can you just refer me over to the pain interventionist and let's just knock Reagan out and, uh, just do that deep. Cause, cause you know, I tap out, you know, it hurts when you're working on the body. So, uh, you know, what a, what a cool innovation and, uh, to get people out of pain quickly. Um, I mean, that's, that's a, a real valuable thing because that means you can get on with your life, but that doesn't mean you're done. That's just the beginning. And then we can actually route you into the next phase, the reparative and remodel phase so much faster. And, and so, um, so let's talk about some of the things, uh, you know, how you address uh, this with particular patients. Let's take a, a patient that you've seen recently, or uh, maybe a spinal patient that you you've seen, it doesn't have to be recently, but what does it look like when they come to work with you? Um, so uh, after we've, so the initial visit, I kind of talk to them, see what they're at. I want to know what their goals are because a lot of the time people, again, are pain driven. And so I want, you know, we can get rid of pain within a couple of visits usually or reduce inflammation, but I want to get them to their goal. And so depending on where that is, and after we've done the examination and the x-rays, and I've kind of figured out a game plan for us, um, a visit with me usually typically results in, depending on the patient it changes, but they'll come in, we'll do, we'll, uh, do some chiropractic manipulation. So, you know, I'm going through the body, finding the areas that need to be adjusted. I'm not just going to line you up and whack you and crack you. We're going to really focus on the areas that need to be worked on. And then we're going to do some extremity work because again, like I mentioned, they work side by side. So even if you're not necessarily having you know, shoulder pain, I'm going to take a look at your shoulders because if you're having neck pain, you know, it might be referred from the shoulders. So we're going to be working on the shoulders. And so after we've kind of worked with everything, I'm also introducing home protocols because, you know, we might only work a couple times a week in office, but to really get a uh, permanent change, we have to really get the momentum on our side. And so I'm giving patients home protocols to do to strengthen up what we're doing in office. And so that we're making more long-term changes. Um, I'm using you know, chiropractic biophysics and pedibon techniques to help um, retrain the process of uh, the spine and the spinal position, helping it hold up against gravity so that we're actually making long-term changes over the course of time. Um, and that's usually what a typical visit um, in, this, uh, in this office proceeds up. If you're going to the surgical center, we may be doing one Saturday um, every couple of weeks for the first little bit to help reduce some of that inflammation, but we're also doing a couple of visits in office to kind of work along with that too. Yeah. Yeah. And from what you've told me when, when patients go over to the surgical center, the results are just sped up. So, you know, it, it basically shaves off a month or two on their overall healing time, which is phenomenal. And, and so uh, if you looked at the, the book, you have loved the most in your practice um what would you say that one is and and um would you recommend that people read it or do you have a better book that people should be reading right now <laughs> um when it comes to books i i mean because of schooling and everything else i did one of the areas that school lacked uh is nutrition and so i actually read a ton of nutrition books i mean every uh, every you know school doesn't teach nutrition very well I'm just going to be honest with it. And so the book that I've read in the last year, year and a half, that's really opened my view was actually from a local guy, uh, Dr. Ben Bickman. And it's why we get sick. And I recommend pretty much everybody read that book because it's such a in-depth look of a lot of different things, but that's one of my favorites along with uh, Dr. David Perlmutter's book, uh, Brain Maker. And so those are my two favorites within the last year that I recommend most people read because, you know, we can work a lot in office and stuff like that, but working on your nutrition and your overall health to reduce the inflammation in general always helps, you know, the more weight you put on or the, you know, more inflammation you have in your body, the harder it is to work with some of these musculoskeletal conditions, you know, the body is such a whole that we have to work it as a whole or else we're going to get limited results. Yeah, I think that's, I love those books and uh, why we get sick. We have that in the office and we do have Brain Maker or Brain Brain or one of David Perlmutter's books in, in our library too at, at the Salt Lake Clinic. So you guys can get in there and, and read it. You have no, no reason why not to now. Right. Uh, beautiful reads. So, so let's talk about, um, 
you know, if, if we looked at, you know, kind of a patient, like a case study, uh, mm-hmm. who would, who would be kind of an interesting patient that we could all connect with who's, you know, maybe near back pain. Near back pain. Um, so I do have this patient that originally came in with just strictly knee pain. That was the only complaint they wanted to come in and talk about because a lot of people have a tendency to section off who, what they tell each provider. Um, but they came in with knee pain and they've only, they've never had any knee trauma or anything like that. And so, um, we originally kind of talked about what was going on and I, you know, mentioned that we want to do a functional exam to see what's going on, which made sense to them. We started the exam and the first thing I looked at was their feet and they're like, no, 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 my, my knee hurts. And I'm like, no, I understand your knee hurts, but a lot of the time, especially without having an actual trauma to the knee, it's something that's going wrong with your feet. And it's like, you have to use your feet by default. And so if you're over pronating or have a flat foot, I was like, you might not necessarily have feet pain, but because of that internal rotation that's increased from the windless effect, you're naturally grinding the medial side of your joint. And then the vastus medialis muscle actually inactivates when you have a flat foot. And so then all of a sudden you have what's called ELPS and your patellas aren't sitting in the groove. They're sitting outside the groove. And every time you bend your knee, they're clicking and rubbing. And I've been working with this patient for about two months now, because after explaining to that to them, they didn't think I was crazy that I wanted to look at their feet all the time. But uh, we did some orthotics. We've, uh, once I helped, we helped stabilize the feet and got the orthotics put on. Um, and, you know, we custom made the orthotics. We adjusted her feet and, you know, worked the rest of the body. And then she started doing exercises. Once we got that under control, she actually was able to go up and down the stairs without using the railing for the first time. She's 70 four years old and she was like I didn't even grab the rail because my knees didn't hurt they felt stable and so that was kind of a cool one that I actually saw this morning that was telling me about it about how awesome she is feeling and can't believe that you know all of a sudden her feet you know doing better made her knees stop hurting so oh that's exciting and the other thing you're bringing into your chiropractic office and chiropractic care there in our Salt Lake Clinic and Alpine are functional medicine uh, reviews and lab reviews and so how does that tie into the posture and the pain? Yeah, great question. So uh, I kind of mentioned that, you know, nutritionally or functionally, that if your body already has a lot of inflammation or, you know, you're having a hard time losing weight or, you know, you're just not feeling like yourself, it stops you from doing a lot of the things that you love to do. And so one of the things is if you increase inflammation, you usually increase the weight, you increase your weight you usually put more stress and load onto your joints, right? We might be able to help kind of get those, you know, joints and everything else positioned well, but if you have excess inflammation and weight, it's really hard to continue to maintain that because then you can't continue to kind of do the things that you want to do to continue to maintain those results. And so looking at the full picture and helping address some of those functional um, metabolic conditions decreases the inflammation, helps you get moving more. And just like anyone would say, motion is lotion. You know, if you're having a lot of joint pain, it's probably because you're not moving a whole lot. And so if you're not moving a whole lot because you hurt, that hurts all the time, then we might need to look at, let's get the inflammation and the systemic inflammation and the metabolic disease under control. And then let's move into the next phase of where once that's starting to calm down, let's get you moving now that you're more comfortable. Let's, you know, work on those joints. Let's get some muscle and some uh, lean tissue back onto you to really help with those results. And so, again, it's looking at the body as a whole. Someone might not have knee pain, but it's because they don't move at all because it hurts all the time because they have gout or, you know, they have un- uncontrolled diabetic neuropathy. And so they're not getting the full function into their knees. And so looking at the full picture of stuff, we might have to get those under control first before we actually move into, you know, chiropractic and rehab, because I can keep working on those areas, but if we don't fix those metabolic conditions, you know, it's kind of impeding our results. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it much more challenging. That's what I found in pain is, is we can make your, your solution that much more permanent when we are using functional medicine. So it's exciting to see you enter into that arena as well. And so just in closing, uh, Dr. Knight, um, what are what are like two or three ways that people could get them out of pain, get themselves out of pain right now? Like, are there any things they could do from like a stretching perspective or? Yeah. So um, 
I, I, the first thing I would look at is the micro traumas in your life. And so check your ergonomics. So there's certain things that everybody does every day. So check your workstation, you know, how are you sitting? Where are your shoulders at? You know, where's your monitor at in comparison to where you're at? Do you sit to stand all the time? Do you take breaks during the day? Um, are you that person in Salt Lake that Reagan's seeing walking around texting like this all the time, you know, checking your Facebook, you got to change those things. You know, even if you're a weird guy like me that texts up here, to, you know, send that quick message or check my Google, you know, check your ergonomics, you know, cause those little stresses and traumas, if you eliminate those, that's a hundred to, you know, thousands of repetitions less of stress put onto your body. So that's one. Um, I'd also say specificity. So you know, there's a war of information, meaning that you Google knee pain, there's so many things that can cause knee pain. Now get tested, see, you know, whether it be blood labs or a structural or functional exam, x-rays, MRI, you know, let's get multiple tests to see is, you know, what's going on with the knee or is it something above or below that's causing the knee pain? And so let's be specific with it. Don't just Google exercises and just go for it. You know, talk to your providers around there to really get a full picture. And the third one I would say is any type of movement. So if you're someone that's on the couch, even, you know, you don't have to be an elite athlete, just do some type of movement, you know, whether that be walking. A lot of people think, you know, if I ask them, like, how are you doing with your exercise? They're like, oh, I'm not exercising. I'm like, oh, but you told me you're walking like, you know, once a day for 20 minutes. And they're like, oh, well, that's not exercise. I'm like, you don't have to be that gym bro that's sitting in there, you know, pumping iron and checking himself out in the mirror. Right. Uh, moderate walking and exercise is a fantastic tool that helps the body's processes overall and actually strengthens your bones. A lot of people that have osteoporosis, if you just started walking, you would improve your uh, bone and uh, bone scans by numerous amounts by just improving the stresses you put in your body every day, like walking. So. Yeah, well, I love that. Yeah, because there's so many things. So check your ergonomics move every day and then just even walk and get some type of exercise yeah uh, i think these are great things so so just in closing um uh, you happen to have a favorite quote that you'd love to share with the audience i do so uh for anyone that knows palmer uh bj palmer was quite an eccentric guy and had a lot of great quotes and one of his favorites that i've always uh always kind of stuck to was the the power that makes the body heals the body you know and what he means by that is that your body is fully capable of making these changes. And so, you know, it's just helping to take some of those uh, impingements or, or something that's impeding your internal results, but your body is fully capable. We don't necessarily have to continue to medicate or uh, do surgeries to help the body to heal. Let's just get the right tools in place because your body and you are fully capable. Man. That is awesome. What a great way to finish. So uh, Dr. Dylan Knight, uh, the one and only, you guys heard it from the master here. Um, I can speak from personal experience. Uh, he's a phenomenal practitioner, great physician, brilliant guy, and just a really a pleasure to be around. So so Dr. Dr. Knight, how can people get in touch with you? Um, so I am in the Salt Lake Anodyne Pain and Wellness. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'm also in the Alpine or Highland Clinic, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm usually pretty quick to email back or get back to you as soon as I can. So my email is dylan, D-Y-L-A-N dot Utah at anodynepain.com. And we can get you, you know, answer any questions or get you in for a consult uh, to see what we can do to really get you to the results and goals that you want. Awesome. Well, thanks for helping so many people live better lives, more functional, with better mental clarity. So thanks, Dr. Knight, for being on this. And thanks, thanks to all of you for being part of our Knee and Spine Pain Relief Summit. Okay, Ann, we're good.